Today's title is A Blessing in the Chaos. Okay? And uh, how many of you find that around the Christmas season that you find yourself there's like so many things happening, so hectic, so chaotic, you know, everything is, you know, everybody drives crazy, you know, for shopping in one place to another and so many things happening, you know. I, 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 I was no exception from the very beginning. But uh, let's just uh, pause for a moment and ask ourselves this question. In the Bible, if one other event that you can safely say that this has got to be the will of God, this event that is totally predetermined, preordained will of God, could the first Christmas be the will of God? Incarnation of Creator God become a creation? Like one of us, God become just like one of us? That day when Jesus, Son of God, was born in the uh, town of David, Bethlehem? Do you think that that was will of God? How many of you think that that was, yeah, that was not accidental, that was definitely will of God, right? And uh, I, because in the Old Testament Bible, hundreds of scriptures they uh, prophesy, you know, the Jesus, you know, the, the Son of God, the Messiah will be born this way and that way and that and that way, and so many predictions. Okay, and and you would think that it would happen in a way that is so taking everything meticulously, right? But we'll find out how that. Complete, hundred percent, thousand percent assured will of God, which is uh, uh, Son of God Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. How did it actually take place? So I want you to open up your Bible to the Gospel of Luke, uh, uh, chapter two. Uh, this is the um, God was setting the, the scene. That uh, Caesar Augustus, you know, he sent the um, all all the people in his uh, in his country, in his kingdom, to uh, register to their original uh, home place, right? And uh, verse four, and so Joseph, you know, which is not the biological father, but the guardian and the husband of Mary, and uh, he was part of. Uh, um, uh, King David's hometown in Bethlehem. So he belonged to Bethlehem, so he had to go to Bethlehem. So, so everything is falling into place. And, um, and, and verse 4 it says, Joseph was all, went up from uh, Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. And because he was all the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary and his a betrothed wife, and who was with child. She was pregnant. And uh, so, yeah, it's all happening. And, uh, look at this picture, you know, stained glass, you know, uh, uh, some of the churches. So what do, you, what do you feel when you see this, you know, a picture of, you know, uh, Mary and Joseph, and uh, for some reason this, you know, Jesus was a European baby with the blonde hair and all that, and, uh, it's there. It's very colorful. I don't think they were this, you know, blue and red sort of actual clothes that way. And uh, um, what's around the head of the uh, Mary and Joseph? What do you call that? Are they wearing some safety helmet? What is that? The round thing around their head. Halo. And uh, they are. They're saints, they're just they're special people. So we always have this picture in our mind, the God, Holy Family, Joseph and Mary, they must be the perfect parents. How many of you have that sort of idea? You know, silent night, you know, holy night and all that, it's just that uh, no one raised their voice. They're all calm, everything under control. Even the animals, you know, just to stay calm, they all just, hang around together and uh, you know holy mother and the father they just all halo glowing around their head 
heading down the hole, fine. And Jesus won't even cry. You know, he's not going to dirty his diaper or anything. It just, you know, we got this sort of uh, a bit of a, a unrealistic picture. But let's dive into it. When Jesus was actually born, what was happening? Okay? And uh, in fact, I'll say he was born into chaos. Right? So what's the uh, scripture says in uh, chapter 2 of Luke? It says, verse 6, So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. In other words, Jesus was in premature birth or a late birth. Jesus was born in the perfect time. The full term. Then there's no excuse. You know, remember your first a child when he was born or when she was born. The always first child is the difficult because you don't know when it's gonna happen and when it's sort of like, oh, babe, you know, honey, I think it's this is it. I, I'm getting the signal. Let's go to the hospital. I mean, we are living in a very comfortable uh, situation. You know, we have a four wheel automatic motor vehicle. We can drive quickly everywhere and uh, you know certify doctors and all these things and still we find the first baby born as very hectic right and uh, and I'm thinking Joseph what were you thinking talking about dropping the ball think about this this isn't you know premature birth it was a full term and we had verse 7 and she brought forth her first born son and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I'm thinking it's got to be someone, you know, Joseph or their relatives, you know, added in that excuses. How would you feel that your husband, you know, knowing that your, what is your expectation day? And I, I don't know, I, I don't have a place, okay? Yes, there's an excuse, there's a census, a lot of people coming, but uh, Joseph from that town, you know, Joseph had relatives and the people, maybe cousins and different people, but when actual that day comes, he did not prepare. He was, I don't know, what happened? Very, we, we read it as a one-liner. But can you imagine the dialogue between, you know, Mary and Joseph? Oh, honey, I'm just about to give birth. And he said, oh, wait, wait a minute, I just, uh, I mean, there's got to be some ways. But if they did not plan ahead, something like this could happen, okay? How many of you uh, have some hectic moments when you plan your uh, trip overseas or going long distance, even for the summer holidays. What happens? Is that, uh, oh, mom, did you take this and did you take that? And in fact, in my family, as I was growing up, my father was very notorious, you know, whenever we go somewhere, he wants to be there at least an hour before. We're not talking about airport, we're talking about train station. You know, he wake us all up and we get, get up at four, five in the morning, and it says, oh, you know, it's like a military surgery. And it's like, you can do, do this, do that. And so we just daily wash and pack everything. And uh, we pack actually the day before, but we still, you know, with the uh, kids, you have to push them quite a bit. So we all get there and uh, go to the soul station and we are sitting there. And I thought we got about five minutes, 10 minutes left. And then, you know, 20 minutes and 30 minutes. And then, where's the train? Did we miss the train? No, because we had to wait an hour literally an hour at the uh, train station because uh, he thought in case you know the train will not wait for you but you can wait for the train and i love to uh, wait for the train that uh, you know make train wait for you you know he's not gonna guess what that did actually pay off one time when i was single going to hawaii for the first time and uh, it's like so excited, you know, what God's going to do in my new chapter of my life. So, you know, same thing, my dad drove and he says, did you have this and that, you know, just he's saying, 
list of things, so what do I do? It's like, yes, daddy, you know, a hundred times and it's all ready. And by the time when we get to the uh, airport, and I realized, guess what? I left passport on the, uh, 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 the dinner table, just to make sure the last thing to put it in my pocket, and left there, and someone distracted me, and I went there without the passport. Can you imagine if I, if my father did not rush us? Well, maybe if he didn't rush us, maybe I would have. But I don't know. Anyway, my father still had time to go back and pick up the passport and run back. Okay? Few years down the road, and I'm married and all that, and one time, uh, my roommate, she had to go to Korea with the kids, and uh, I had to say the same thing, that, uh, honey, are you sure that you have passport? Yes, yes, I do. Because I remember there's some older ones. Make sure the date is the up-to-date. Honey, I know what I'm doing. It is a totally brand new one. Don't worry about it. So still, I just wanted to be there all the I just drop her off and coming home. You know one of those moments that uh, this is very weird and this time everything went too soon. And sure enough, almost I got to the uh, you know, Glenfield and I got this phone call and said, uh, uh, Jason, Jason, and I said, oh well, I think I picked the old uh, passport instead of new one. Could you bring it back? I looked at the time and I was like, <laughs> It's like, I thought, I don't think I can make it, but I run and I was right there on the table. Like, that picked that up, put it in my pocket and I began to drive like mad man and barely made it. So, I think somehow the uh, airplane was kind of, kind of waiting for them and uh, so she made it, right? And these sort of things happen all the time, but I'm, when I'm reading this text, is somehow, maybe Joseph, this is my kids, you know, that's Holy Spirit, God, yeah, I had a dream, sure. But it's, I mean, nightmare for pregnant women. You cannot even find a place to give birth. And ended up, your husband came up with the honey, I think this would work. And you go to a barn, animal barn, but the, no matter how much you clean the animal barn and if people from the farming area, you would know that you can still smell, you know, not so a, a pleasant smell. And this is the situation and he could not even come up with some proper basket. So where they have to lay down the brand new son of God? Major, what's major? It's, it's the thing that where the animal eat off. Trump. A box. And that's where, you know, I don't think, you know, a Mary could lay down the baby. You know, it must be uh, a husband. Joseph lay down. I'm sure he put some straws and all that. I don't think this is a perfect bird. I would say this is very chaotic, crazy, a lot of you know, just uh, what do I do, what do I do, sort of moment. And we don't see any uh, 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 medical staff or more experienced people. Just these two, and they are in that chaotic situation. And one must wonder. This is an incredible miracle that without involvement of man in a part, single woman, a uh, virgin, divine intervention, and creating a baby, that baby to grow up, and uh, now of giving birth, God prepared that much of a miracle. But he kind of forgot about his pastor. Where he's going to born? Where he's going to be born? And nothing was arranged. And he's supposedly, uh, supposedly he's a uh, servant. Joseph struck the ball, couldn't find the proper place. You see? And uh, what was that excuse? What was the lame excuse? Because there was no room for them in the inn. Alright? 
Is that the real reason? Because uh, sometimes when we think that Jesus, Son of God, to be born in this world, to be the sacrificial lamb for the rest of the uh, mankind, this is a pretty important deal. And yet the way that the execution, execution of that delivery, of that wonderful gift, seemed very untidy, don't you think? It's like so many missing holes. So it's like we may be turning it into a beautiful story, but if you were that Joseph, if you were that Mary, oh, I thought I'm having a God's child. But God does not even provide for his child for the proper place to give birth. Not even a human room. This is for animals. Animals, you know, the feeding place that I have to lay down. Do you see? And sometimes you feel like, I thought I heard from God. I thought I'm following the will of God. And yet, instead of things taking meticulously, one holding up and another thing doesn't work. Things actually pull me apart. And you must wonder, am I actually in the will of God? Am I actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Did I get the right house? Did I get the right address? Can you imagine? Oh, I thought it was all part of God's plan. <coughs> How come there's no room in the inn? How come there's not even a proper basket for the God's child to be laid down? This is not just that Christmas story for all your life and mine are bad things. And uh, I can tell you there's so many times that I thought, I heard from the Lord and I'm following and I'm doing the will of God and yet everything falling apart. So chaotic. So I ask myself, God, what have I done wrong? What's, what's going wrong? But then, the story didn't end there. The night, then the angel is said to the, uh, the shepherds. This is another scene when uh, Mary gave birth to Jesus. And do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, and which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ. The Lord, this is the most important title that any human being can have. I mean, who can handle the title of Savior for all mankind? That's the one title, Christ, Jesus Christ. He was born. Even angels in the heavenly realm, when you look at the heavens and everything works fine. All these angels, they know what they are doing. They are telling the great news to the shepherds. And the uh, Savior, who is Christ, the Lord, He is born. And verse 12, and this will be the sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in a swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The manger part was not predicted in Old Testament part. But you thought the event, very event, that this Things somehow, you know, the blame game. Maybe Mary said, Joseph, I thought you have some bunch of uh, relatives and some of their friends. And how come you didn't plan? I, I mean, it wasn't even on the expected birth, and I'm giving birth in an exact day, and you're not prepared. And, you know, maybe Joseph says, you know, just uh, Mary, you know, you just, do you think how, how hard it is, you know, that uh, giving birth to, you know, just uh, someone that I'm not, you know, I'm sure it's God, but you know, that's what you said. But all sort of things going on. And at the end, the baby was to end up in a manger. And yet, after all, what, has, what, what was happening? These angels came down and they said, What will be the only sign? The sign that you will see is that the baby in a manger. That will be the sign for you to recognize that that is the Christ. Savior for all mankind. Isn't that awesome? That you think that this is just a, you know, just a universal uh, failure. This is so crazy, so something went wrong. But when you look at major, but in a heavenly realm, 
And God says, that is all part of God's permission and control, that everything is under God's control. And in fact, that is the sign for these shepherds to know that there is uh, something special is going on. And I want to tell you that what when you pursuing the will of God and you find yourself in some uh, chaotic situation, very unexpected and disappointing situation, don't lose your heart. Perhaps still from heavenly realm, from God's point of view, everything is, say that to someone next to you, everything is under control. Let me say that again. Everything is under God's control. That is the story of first Christmas. From human point of view, you try to book an inn, you try to book a hotel, but nothing works. So you end up in a little garage, and, and uh, there's just a whole animal feeding box that you have to lay down your baby in. If I were the uh, Mary or the Joseph, and I feel very, very, you know, discouraged and just uh, heavy-hearted, and all this question, where is God in this? You know, how, uh, you know, what is happening? But I want to tell you, even in the midst of your darkness, I want to tell you still who is in control. God is in control over your life. If you can believe that, say Amen. God is still in control. Even in the midst of your chaos, your situation, perhaps your Christmas this year, you cannot enjoy that well because of your situation at work, because of your situation at home. Who knows what sort of situation you may have, but I want to tell you, everything is under His control. Amen? And in fact, it was all part of the plan. And verse 13, and suddenly, and there was what the um, angels, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Okay? Well, is that the end of the story? So now, oh, everything's going to all work out. Watch out for the Disney ending. Because it just tricks you in your mind. One major event happened. Well, how does the, uh, all the, uh, uh, the, the princess story and the Disney animation end? And then they live happily ever after. No more trouble, no more uh, chaos, everything works out well. That is not true. That's only Disney. I don't think that's real. You know? This is better story than Disney story. Any of the princess or the prince charming story. This is the prince of God. His story was at the end of chaos in the life of Jesus. Uh -uh. The major thing is only cute and little thing. It is only the beginning of the more chaos, more trouble. Are you with me? So, actually, in his life, even in the story of uh, Christmas, chaos continued. Okay, uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, it shows us what sort of trouble that he's in. And uh, he's got um, uh, the first uh, holy family, they had these visitors from the east, these wise men from the east, and uh, they you know the story. And now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt. Now we have to migrate to a foreign country. And to stay there until I bring you word, for Herod, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You know the story. King Herod, he sent is, a, is a, a mad king and is so jealous of everything. He killed his own sons and his wife and his, so many of his own family members because of uh, suspecting that maybe he uh, wants to be king. You know, he's a power-hungry, crazy man. And when he heard from the uh, wise man that there, uh, there's a, a newborn king and there's a chance to saw that newborn king by the time when he becomes teenager or something, you know, and he'd be already dead. You know, he's too old. But he is so crazy, so obsessed with the, uh, his kingship. So he would kill any boys that is under two years old, will be wiped away and killed. And God, heaven, 
informed Joseph to save. So they had to be the migrant going to Egypt. All right? So the chaos still continues. All these crazy things uh, happen. Okay? I want to tell you, just uh, hold your breath. Just because a one trouble is resolved doesn't mean that it is the end of chaos. Something else may pop. Something beyond your control. But you've got to trust the Lord. Remember the message of uh, last week? The Lord is my shepherd. He speaks to His children. He guides them. Okay? He's not going to let you be there and destroy. And if it is will of God, if you're pursuing the uh, uh, will of God, God will direct you. Okay? So the chaos still continues. But also the blessing is the blessing of God is also continued in the life of Jesus. And look at the uh, Luke chapter 2. Despite of all of these things happening around the life of Jesus and uh, the Mary and Joseph, and verse 40 says the child grew and became strong and stirred, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Uh, think about your own life. Think about your children's life when they were little. You know, sometimes you know so many accidents happen, and this happened, and that happened. But what really matters is that they are, despite of all the chaotic situation and circumstance, the blessing of God and the, the little baby Jesus grow up to a little boy and become strong in the spirit and with the wisdom and the grace of God. How many of you can see grace of God? You cannot see grace of God. You cannot touch grace of God. But you can see the effect of the grace of God. And something special. That's what I call blessing. Invisible, you know, just the, the, the blessing of God was upon the little baby Jesus. And people can see if you pay attention. And that was happening. Okay? And I love to tease um, uh, just the holy family of parents. For well, those of you are parents who feel like I'm not a good mother, I'm not a good father, I want to cheer you up. Okay? Are you ready? You know the story when Jesus was 12 years old, you know, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the uh, temple. What happened? They kind of forgot their firstborn child. And how hard did they go? Whole day. You know, 24 hours they go on, not noticing that, oh, my son is missing. Okay? It's not like you miss your uh, passport. I know some uh, families, and uh, even this year, uh, the whole family booked a trip to overseas. And the uh, day before uh, the trip, they realized that the, one of the uh, kids' passport is not renewed. So they couldn't cancel the trip. So leaving one child behind and they went on. Okay? Because otherwise, it's a kind of ticket you cannot cancel. You know, all of this, the hotels and all of those things. And uh, that, I think that's why Christmas movie always, you know, what do they show? You know, Home Alone. You know? Not just once and twice and all that sort of thing. And there's a biblical root of it is there. That Mary and Joseph, they left Jesus, they dropped the ball again, how, how far, whole days of journey they go on, so the one day. And how many days for them to look everywhere to look for a child? Three days. So do you feel already better? At least I didn't do that on my child. Okay? And, uh, and this is what um, Mary says, Son, why have you done this to us? We're talking about 12-year-old kid. And I will say that the uh, mom and dad, they should make sure that their, their little minor kid is with them. But when they found them, they say, what have you done to us? You know, that, isn't that what the parents sometimes say? You know, if, although they've done something, they say, you have done this to us. Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. Okay? And a few verses, 51. As Jesus was growing up, so many incidents happened. Scared moments. Can you imagine four days 
without your parents as a 12-year-old. Because the Bible says this as a one sentence. But what are the problem? When you are 12 years old in a foreign city, in a different city, you have to eat, you, have, you need a place to sleep, and all that. The Bible doesn't say how Jesus manage all that. And so it was a traumatic experience, right? It could have been. But despite all of those things happening in the life of Jesus, and verse 51, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. I'm going to tell you something. That you may go through some of the chaotic situations, but there is a blessing of God, there is a will of God that is continue on. Despite of all the chaos and despite of all these unexpected things and heartaches and surprises, you know what? We got to see the big picture. God is still in control. Amen. So don't worry too much about every little thing that your child is going through. Things do happen. You may drop the ball this way or that way. But at the end, what, hap what happens? The Word of God following through in the life of Jesus. Amen. Same thing for you. What you need and what I need is that you need and we need trust and faith in God who take everything, all of our chaos, even our mistakes, under His control. Amen? So why don't we just uh, close our eyes that uh, not only Christmas season, but the whole life can be so unexpected so many unexpected things happen, so many things that disappoint you, even painful. But I want to tell you something. God is big God. Everything is under His permission, under His control. We need to focus on the most important thing. Jesus was saved. He grew strong in spirit. He increased in His knowledge and wisdom. And the will of God, the train of God was continue running on the track. We cannot see that track. And that's why we can easily be discouraged. But it is still running according to God's plan and purpose. It may seem like everything is big chaos. But it is a beautiful plan and purpose of God running through your life. So why don't we just spend some time just responding to God. And I want you to actually stand up in your place that when you sense that the Lord and I have so much of anxiety just like Mary says, and I was so anxious this, and I have so much trouble, so much of concern for something. Maybe you have some concern for your work. Maybe you have some concern for your uh, provision as a, a, a father for the family. And who knows what's going on in your life? But I want to tell you, you just uh, give it up all to the Lord and pay attention to this uh, the heavenly sign, what the Lord is saying to you. And it's going to be okay. It's going to be under His control, under His permission. So there's no point of you losing your faith and losing your peace. Peace on earth. And that was the message from Angel. So I want you to just uh, stand up in your place that you want to, if you want to just uh, present your anxiety, whatever the sense of failure, whatever the sense that, the, oh, perhaps I didn't do this one right. Perhaps I uh, didn't reserve that in, in time. Perhaps I you know, should have looked for my child and all that. That's okay. Let go and, uh, and stand up in your place. And I want to pray that the Lord will bless you. And I want to tell you that you need to have the faith that God is in control. And He will take care of some major things. Some of you worry about marriage. And some of you worry about job situations. Some of you worry about all these financial situations. But I want to tell you to seek His kingdom first. And everything else will fall in, into the right place. 
And Father God, I just uh, want to stretch my hand and bless all these ones that are standing up and showing their uh, decision to the Lord. The Lord, and I want to lift up all my anxiety to you. And I want to trust you and I want to follow you. And I pray that you will give us the heavenly insight, not the insight of man, not the, 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 the emotion of our flesh, but we want to have the divine perspective. What is really going on? Nothing is going to stop. I'm going to tell you this. Nothing is going to stop for the will of God to take place in your life. What you need is faith in His will. Let's put our trust in the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. And I bless all these people who are standing up and you will give them the assurance in their heart with the way my Lord does. Thank you, Lord. And we bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you.